Hello everyone, my name is The Fox. In this video, we'll be taking a look at The Last of Us Part 1, which was just released on PC. Code for this game was provided by PlayStation for review purposes. My coverage on the PC port will be looking at this game on both the Steam Deck, as well as AMD 6800U based gaming handouts like the iNeo 2, or GBD Win Max 2, or GBD Win 4. While it is possible to play The Last of Us Part 1 on Steam Deck right now, it's still advisable to wait for the port to receive further patches as there still needs work to be done to address some key improvements which we'll showcase in this video. This video will be broken up into a few sections. Before we get too far, the version of The Last of Us that I'm testing against is version 1.0.1.6. On Steam Deck, I'm running SteamOS 3.5, BIOS version 1.15. I did increase swap size to 8GB as The Last of Us does cross over the 1GB mark. UMA is still 1GB, and I'm not doing any other tweaks outside of increasing page file. On 6800U, I'm running Windows 11 22H2, the latest AMD driver, which is explicitly optimized for the last OS Part 1. All footage on Windows is recorded at PL1 and PL2 at 20 watt TDP. I'm not using any auto TDP features to try and min-max the GPU, and EPP mode is set at 80. If you purchased The Last of Us Part 1, we need to start with some pre-flight checks. When first launching this game, you do need to let the game run to fully compile shaders, and it's a bit of a meme at this point, but it does take a while depending on the strength of your CPU. So on Steam Deck, you will wait nearly an hour for it to compile, but if you're on the 6800U platform, be sure to be plugged in and set TDB to 828 watts so that you can compile shaders a bit faster. Next, here are the settings I used on Steam Deck, but they are transferable to 6800U platforms as well. Okay, in this section, we're going to take a look at the settings that I use primarily for the Steam Deck, but this applies to 6800U handhelds as well. In display, I typically have everything as the defaults that they have by as they come. So you will be at 720p. However, if you take a look at my render resolution, it is 752 by 424. And this is because I am using FSR2. I'll touch base on that in just a second. I do have uh, VSync off. I do have a frame rate cap of 30. However, on the Steam Deck's own settings, I have a frame limit of 60. And I do allow tearing. If you have the frame limit off, I don't notice tearing on the internal display either. It should be noted that I am using the preview build of SteamOS, so this is SteamOS 3.5. I did increase the swap size to 8 gigabytes because I do notice that swap does go over 1 gigabyte in size. Slightly over, but it is still recommendable. Otherwise, I am not using cryo-utils at all. For scaling mode, you can see that I'm using FSR2. Now, because the game Last of Us 2 is such a CPU-bound game, because FSR2 has a small tax GPU-wise for us, and again, we're not very GPU bound. The end result is that going to FSR2 will just improve image quality without actually reducing frame rate at all, all that much. So going to just straight render render resolution scaling is not preferable. Likewise, doing balance quality, I found to be just fine. Doing performance or ultra performance does not effectively increase our frame rate at appreciably. So the end result is that going to balance is fine. Going to quality will impact frame rate somewhat, and balanced is a nice area overall that pretty good image quality. For field of view, I bumped this up to five, but everything else I turned down all the way. Before I go into graphics themselves on the audio section, one thing that I did was that I it does default to 3D spatial sound, and I put this to 2.0 stereo. And the only reason I did that was that I had a concern that the 3D spatial sound was also imp impacting CPU performance. Bottom line is that we are only able to really barely hit 30 FPS, and it'll be sub 30 FPS most of the time, especially in action scenes, but we can hit a rather consistent 30, and I'll show some benchmark results afterwards as well in this particular video. The curious thing about the graphics preset, and you can see it says custom here. When it gets to custom is when you actually start changing things. So one of the things that I prefer because some of the texture quality stuff is locked behind uh, locks, and it seems to be dependent on other settings, just set this to ultra and then start working your way down. For animation quality, you can see effect on performance that says CPU major. Again, we are very CPU bound. So anything that is CPU bound, we want to minimize as much as possible. So for animation quality, set this to low. For draw distance, likewise, set this to low. For dynamic object level of detail, all this level of detail, setting it to medium is fine. Going to high, I did notice that we started to get significant sub 30 FPS uh, frame rate. So I typically don't want to go to high here. This is after a few hours of playing, so a medium has been a better default for me. These particular settings are all locked, and I have not found any particular way to unlock them, and they seem associated with another setting, so there's nothing really we can change here. For texture filtering, I do boost this up to 16x. This really isn't going to impact performance at all, so just going to 16x is fine. For texture sampling quality, going to high has been overall fine for me. And pretty much everything else below this part, I just set it as low as possible or off. And this is really going to be a section where 
uh, making sure that we have the absolute best frame rate possible, which is really going to be 30 FPS is where we're going to be able to hit. For depth of field, I have this for cinematics only. I don't have this for in-game. Uh, and that's pretty much it. So changing audio settings from 3D spatial, which it defaults to to stereo, using display, FSR2 balanced, and the graphic settings that I use are what I have. All right, so this is what in-game looks like. And you can see that we have a flux rating frame rate. We went down to 25 just very briefly. If we take a look at the CPU section, you can see that we're drilling those hard. For reference, uh, to put all four cores at 3.5 gigahertz, it's going to take nearly 14 watts by itself. So the CPU is largely consuming most all of the power that we have here. And the GPU is trying its very best to fill in the gap as much as possible. But what happens is you're going to find that the GPU is sub 1 gigahertz a lot of the time. So the GPU is actually taking exceedingly little power and the CPUs are taking most of the power in this game. If we take a look at the settings that I chose, you can see that Joel is not as meme worthy as some of the pictures that have been sent out there previously. Obviously, if we move around, you can see there's some fraying and this is to do with FSR2 with its image up, uh, image upscaling techniques. However, the overall image quality after the upscale is really good to be honest. So those are my settings. Let's go ahead and take a look at some benchmarks between the Steam Deck as well as 6800U. As pointed out in the settings section, right now we aren't going to get a consistent 30 FPS on Steam Deck. The reason for this is that The Last of Us 1 is exceedingly CPU bound almost all the time. For reference on why this matters, the Steam Deck is limited to a max of 15 watt TDP. This power budget is split between CPU, GPU, and Encore. When we take a look at other CPU metrics, we can see that the CPUs are constantly getting drilled and we are averaging almost 11 watt for the CPU alone, which means that the remaining 4 watt is divided between GPU and Encore. Ideally, as patches start coming in for The Last of Us Part 1, the first hope is that Naughty Dog addresses what's going on with regard to the very high CPU usage. If this gets solved, it's easy to think that we should be able to hit 800p40 on The Last of Us on Steam Deck without FSR2. Another issue with The Last of Us on PC right now is how textures are unloaded and reloaded in different scenes. During this one cinematic scene, we can see that Ellie is missing her freckles on the Steam Deck, but loaded just fine at 6800U. However, this isn't exclusively on Steam Deck where this issue is happening. Literally just a few moments later, we can see textures didn't fully load on 6800U, but it did stream in on Steam Deck. Largely, these are two big standout issues with the port right now. I didn't personally experience any crashing on either platform, but I'm aware that other people have experienced these issues. On 6800U with the latest Windows driver, it actually is possible to run The Last of Us at 40 FPS with a very good consistency at 20 watt TDP. So this is one area where I can easily recommend the Last of Us Part 1. If we briefly take a look at benchmarks, we can see on Steam Deck how erratic frame time is and how we can achieve an average 30 FPS, but 1% lows do go down to 17 FPS. Just taking a look at the frame time graph alone really spells out the feeling on Steam Deck. On Windows and 6800U, I did test at a few different TDPs, and even though I found 20 watt TDP to be mostly fine for 40 or 40 FPS, what I typically, re what I typically recommend is to set target frame rate where 1% lows fall. This is generally best practices, however the choice is ultimately up to you on what you're looking to achieve. I remain absolutely optimistic that PlayStation is porting games to PC, and there have been a number of PlayStation games that arrived on PC that haven't been fantastic on day one, but eventually got better with patches. If you've never played The Last of Us before and you don't own a PlayStation, I would still recommend picking this game up eventually. On 6800U-based handhelds, the experience is actually pretty good. It's just on Steam Deck where it's not ideal at the current moment. As more patches arrive for the PC port, I'll be sure to continue looking at this game and I'll report on when and if things get better. As is almost tradition at this point, I continue wearing my PlayStation shirt whenever I cover the PC ports of PlayStation games. The thing here is that I remain really, really happy that PlayStation is porting their exclusive games over to PC. This is huge for people that have never had a PlayStation, have no intention of buying PlayStation, but still want to be able to play it, especially on PC where even thinking about Having the game and playing it later on is going to be more, more feasible than games that get stuck on PS4 or PS5. And realistically, the only way that we're going to play that is through emulators, and that is getting harder and harder as time goes on. So I myself am very optimistic and a supporter of this initiative that PlayStation is doing. I continue to want to see them porting more of their games over to PC. And most importantly, overall, I think it's just going to be better for everybody. Anyway, as always, guys, thanks for your time, and thanks for watching.